One of the most frequent topics we get asked about is motorhome batteries. Not these ones, but these. Questions like, why won't my motorhome start? I can't get the lights on inside the motorhome. And how do I know my leisure battery is charging? So today, we're gonna to give you a two for one, and we're going to give you a basic understanding of the two batteries of motorhomes. So go make a cup of tea, and by the time you've drank it, you'll have a basic understanding of motorhome batteries. Okay. Motorhome batteries. We have two batteries, vehicle battery, leisure battery. They do, do, do come in all different shapes and sizes. Now, can you see how small these batteries are compared to this? These batteries have to look after all this motorhome. So if you take care of your batteries, the batteries will take care of you. So first of all, we have a vehicle battery. The vehicle battery looks after this side. It looks after the engine, the lights, your heating, your air conditioning, and all the fancy things you have in your cab. The leisure battery is for this side, which looks after your lights, your water pumps, your heating, and everything else. The difference between the two batteries is the vehicle battery is, desi is designed to give it good wallet for when you start it, where a leisure battery is designed to give a constant flow. Vehicle batteries do not like to go flat, where leisure batteries are designed to go flat and to be recharged again. Vehicle batteries are normally found in three different places. On the old vehicles, normally under the bonnet. Under the driver's seat. And on newer vans, but on the floor of the cab. A vehicle battery is designed to provide a very large amount of current for a short period of time, i.e. to start it. Once the engine is started, the alternator provides all the powerful power the vehicle needs and recharges the battery. Uh, the problem lies when the vehicle isn't starty, just like motorhomes over winter. It's all out with cars, because you're in and out the cars all day long and driving them. But with motorhomes, if you're not moving them and with all the gadgets on them and all your alarms and everything else, and they're standing there, it's just sucking the life out of the battery. And that's what happens when you don't start your motor home every week. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to jump start the van. So because the battery on this motor home is inside the van at the bottom of the cab, they have got points where you can jump. So there's your positive, which is under the cap. So what we'll do, there's a the jump pack, which we'll put onto that. And then we need, now need to find an earth, which will go onto the screw there, the bolt there. We'll turn the jump pack on. Now that we've jump started, what this motor home really wants now is a good run, 10, 15, 20 miles. When I said to you earlier, when the, uh, the vehicle started, um, the battery uses a lot of power. And then after when the vehicle started, the alternator takes over, with which then that powers the cab 
and also puts a charge back into the battery. So another reason why a battery could be failing is the alternator's not working. So an easy way to do this is we get a multimeter and how we jumped the vehicle earlier on, we put the positive onto where we jumped and then we also find an earth and earth it. Then we get the multimeter, which you can buy for five, 10, 15, 20 pounds. And what we're gonna do is turn the dial to 20 volts. The reason being is we're working within anywhere between naught and 15, 16 volts. So we'll switch it on. And we're getting at the moment 11.5s. And then what I'm gonna do now is start the vehicle. And then in theory, the meter then should go up as the alternator's putting the charge back into the battery. So as you can see on the meter, the charge is putting, uh, the, oh sorry, the alternator's putting the charge back into the battery, as you can see the voltage going up onto the battery. Okay folks, it's not rocket science about looking after your vehicle battery. Make sure you start it every week and let it run for at least 15 minutes. Ideally, what you want to be doing is taking it for a run. Um, when we start a van up, we like to let it run for at least an hour because they don't get moved often. So it gives it chance, one, to get all the oil and all the water and everything and get it heated up and just generally have a really good run. The way we keep on top of our van, vans is we've got a board. Basically what we've got, we've got the number of the vans on top and when we've started it. So we know where to start them every week. And like I said to you, when we start them, we let them run for an hour. Um, so far this year, we haven't had to change a single battery. The only one thing we've had to do is swap a starter motor out on a van. Another trick we do in winter time, especially when it gets cold, because batteries and the cold weather just don't mix and cold always wins, is what we do is we put a cheap battery charger um, onto, onto the engine and just trickle charge it for a couple of days. And then what we do, after a couple of days, we'll take it off this one, move it onto the next one and go all the way down the line and then back all the way up again. So the way we keep on top of the motor homes along here, as well as starting them up every week, is what we do. And if you have a look on top of the shed here, we've actually got solar panels. So we've actually got three solar panels on top. We've got an angled one, then we've got two flat ones on top of the shed. So the solar's on top, which then comes to a controller inside. So as you can see there, that's battery one and battery two. Green light is that they're nearly fully charged. And one and two represents van one and two. So from the controller then, the leads are then coming out. And then what we do, the lead from the controller's coming along. And just like battery charging, We've connected the solar panel then up to the battery live and we found an earth. So therefore we're keeping um, the powered up through solar technology as well, as well as also starting them once a week. So as a rule of thumb, don't forget, start your vans up once a week or take them for a run. Another way is by using a battery charger or also by using solar panels. Leisure batteries. Leisure batteries are designed to give a steady amount of current over a long period of time and also designed to discharge over and over again. Now that's something a vehicle battery won't do and you will ruin a vehicle battery doing that. So you can't really put a vehicle battery on a leisure battery and you can't put a leisure battery onto a vehicle battery because a leisure battery hasn't got enough oof to start the vehicle battery. Got it? Right, so leisure batteries, they can be put underneath the bonnet 
we could also have leisure bike trees on outside hatches of motor outside hatches of motorhomes and also they can be in the floors of motorhomes um, under seats you're best consulting your manual to see where your leisure battery is so on this one the leisure battery is on the floor in a hatch One of the questions we get asked a lot of is how do I know my leisure battery is charging when my hookup's in? Which is quite simple really. So if we go, here's the main control panel or consumer unit in this van. And as you see at the top, um, that's the switch for the battery charging. So if we switch that off, and then we get our trusty multimeter again. And when I've already put the positive to the positive, negative to negative, because we're working in 12 volts, we're going to go to 20. And we can see the battery at the moment is reading 12.83. So now, if I switch the battery charger back on again, you can see it rising up. And the battery charger is doing its job, trickle charging to the ledger battery. As well as checking that the, um, the battery charger is charging the leisure battery up, we can also check that the engine's charging the leisure battery up as well for when you're driving along. So what we'll do, we'll switch the battery charger off, and then what we can do is look at the multimeter, and then I'm going to start the engine up. The light will go off inside the van, because that's a UK safety thing, so you're not uh, driving your motor home with the interior lights on. So I'll start the engine and then hopefully um, the alternator will charge the leisure battery up as well. The lights have gone up and as you can see the alternator is charging the leisure battery up as well. Now doing that test that we've done to check see if your leisure battery is charging up from your hookup you can actually get caught out on some motorhomes. So what I've done with this motorhome is I've put a hook up into the van and you can see on the consumer unit here I'm going to trip it. Now that's stopping any more 240 coming into the van. If there wasn't 240 coming into the van the consumer unit wouldn't trip. So what we're going to do now is go over to our trusty multimeter and as you can see I've uh, connected it up to the leisure battery positive and negative and we're going to take a reading 12.57 and what I'm going to do now is switch the consumer unit back on which will bring power back into the van and theoretically if the battery charge is working the multimeter should go up and you see it stayed the same Like I've said before, this is where you can get caught out with these vans. Now if you notice on the control panel, we have a rocker switch with off, hab, vehicle. Hab would be leisure battery, vehicle would be vehicle battery. So in order to charge um, the leisure battery up, we have to knock it onto hab. So if I push that onto hab, then theoretically, the multimeter should then go up. So I'll switch it over to hab. And as you can see, we're charging up the leisure battery. So also as well, what you can do, if you've got a hook up into the van, and you're not using the van, you can charge it off your leisure battery, and then after a few days you can switch it over to vehicle battery. And rotate between the two, charging the two up, which is quite good really. With leisure batteries, uh, a little bit like vehicle batteries, if you're not using the vehicle, over a period of time, every now and again put a hook up into the van so it does trickle charge um, the leisure battery. I have noticed on this motorhome it has actually got a solar panel on so in the daytime it will be trickle charging um, the leisure battery and also the vehicle battery as well. If something like this tends to happen and you're plunged into darkness Nine times out of ten, it's going to be the fuse. Um, the main fuse is located by the by the leisure battery. 
All 12 volt appliances and lights all have fuses. They're nearly always together and on this van they're on the power supply and they're all spade fuses and they're all clearly marked up as fridge, front lights, um, ignition, water pump, toilet and vents. So if an appliance isn't working again it'll normally be a fuse rather than your ledger battery. A lot of motor homes give you the option of either using the ledger battery or the vehicle battery. Now just be careful that you most of the time that you're on a leisure battery because vehicle battery, the moment you use vehicle battery you are actually using the vehicle battery itself it's more designed as if you're wild camping and your leisure battery's gone down on you you need your vehicle battery just, just for a quick source of power somewhere down the line you might want to put an additional leisure battery onto your vehicle especially if you do a lot of wild camping um, so what we've got here We've got the existing leisure battery that's on the motorhome and this is the positive coming from the motorhome onto your existing battery and there's your negative coming onto your existing battery there. So now you want to put an extra battery onto the motorhome. So what we do, um, you can use different size leisure batteries but what we tend to do is for example this is a 105 we like to put a 105 on as the extra one we like to keep them the same and then what we tend to see is the positive going onto the new battery connected up to the existing battery and then the negative on the new battery connected up to the existing battery so there you've got two batteries linked up no and what you're doing is you're still only using this leisure battery <clears throat> and this battery is not getting used to, at all so what we need to do is we can keep this the same we've got the positive coming in onto the existing battery linked up to the new one and what we need to do is if we take this off the lead from the motor home now needs to go to the new battery and then we link up the existing battery So the new battery and now we're getting both uh, batteries working together what we also like to do as well is the two links we like to keep the leads at the same length so now you've got two leisure batteries working together okay I, am, I hope that's given you a basic understanding of motor own batteries whether it's the vehicle battery or the leisure battery um, the crux of the matter is is just charge your batteries up whether you take the vehicle for a run or you put a battery charge on or you use solar power and it's the same with the leisure batteries as well so just keep them charged and they'll look after you okay if you're watching this um, video and you've not subscribed to us please subscribe to us it does mean a lot and we'll see you soon with some more different motorhome makes models reviews hints and tips